Hi, Terry here with Bead Addicts Yarn, and in this video we're going to be completing the final row for the bottom of our basic beginner bag and learn how to continue following up the sides. So, I hope you have all your supplies ready and let's get started. Okay, row uh, 18 says one single crochet in the next nine stitches. All right, so we, we're going to beginning, so we need to remove our stitch marker and do our first single crochet in the first stitch here. Pull them forward as we have been in the past. And our technique is not going to change. Uh, we're just going to be throwing a couple more things in as we progress along. Um, let me put our stitch marker back in place here. Alrighty, so that was stitch one. So we have a total of nine, and it's just one in each of these. Two. Three. And I'm going to pause this for a second because this position of the camera is not working for me. Just a moment. Okay, I think we got it now. This is a little bit better for me. I had too many obstacles. I was trying to overcome the way I had my camera the other way. So we have um, our first three stitches on there. This is of row 18. So we're doing nine, four. Oops. Five. Six. Seven. That was a little tight. Let's get in there. There we go. Eight. And nine. Now we are going to, I have to move my paper over here. We're going to do two single crochets in the next stitch. So that's an increase like we've been doing in the previous rows. Um, so that's two single crochets in this stitch. So the um, the written instructions for this are on the Facebook group. Um, so you can, if you don't have them, you can go and get them and print them out. So that was our increase. And then we are going to one single crochet in the next 33 stitches. Now I know a lot of you are having trouble with keeping your count. So <laughs> do whatever you got to do to, to make sure you're in your right place. Um, if you're experienced enough, sometimes you can, you can see exactly where your stitches are and you can count them. You can see where your increases are. And I don't know if you can see in here, but there is just a little bit, a little bit of the yellow yarn showing through here. So um, if you see that happening a lot, all you need to do is, now this is, you don't want to pull so much that you're um, changing the position of your stitches, but if you just kind of give a nice firm grab on those stitches there with your thumb and your fingers underneath and pull on your, just a little tug on your um, carrying threads, that should take care of that. It should be pretty tight if you're doing it the way I um, the way I mentioned to you about pulling, um, placing your carrying threads in front. It should be taking care of a lot of that. 
All right, so we're going to do 33. So uh, go on and do 33, and I will too. I'm not going to bore you with watching me count to 33. You know how to do that by yourself, I'm sure. So I'll be back after I have my 33 completed. Okay, so I completed the 33 stitches. So, so far we've done nine single crochets and then an increase, which was the two in the next stitch, in the 10th stitch. And then one single crochet in the next 33 stitches. Now what you're gonna be doing is, the reason we're doing this round a little different than the other ones is because in, um, we had in row 17 we had 136 stitches now for our pattern that we're doing when we go up the sides we're going to need 140 stitches total around here so that means 136 and 140 there's a difference of four so we needed to put four increases in here and um so that's why our count was a little different so we need to put the four increases in and it's also going to help um, round it out a little bit more I don't know if you can see it here how this is bumping out just a little bit and like I like I said in the very beginning I am trying to keep this as simple as possible for you so that you don't you can under you can learn the technique learn how to make the stitches and um, and then we'll get into the more technical stuff in our next bag okay I want you I want to take you in in baby step, steps instead of trying to jump in like I did and do it all and do patterns that were a lot harder than I should have and it was very frustrating I know this has been very frustrating for some of you but um, I'm happy I'm really happy to see and I'm happy for you that you're um, you're making progress and you're getting better and no matter how many times you had to frog your work your project it's okay because you learned a lot every time you did it you learned something new and um, and that's what it's all about so I'm not going to bore you again with watching me count um, we're just going to you can just follow on the pattern um, that is like I said it's it's on our Facebook page for um, tapestry and mochilla crochet bags on Facebook um, so Find the pattern it's in the files and print it out or just keep it on your tablet or your phone or whatever and um, follow along with round 18 and when you get to the end of eight round 18 you should have 140 stitches and then we'll be ready to start up the sides of the bag so then it gets a little bit more fun because then we won't have any more increases you just kind of have to still keep your count which is very important but once you get going with it once you get the first few rows done when we get into the actual pattern of the bag um, you'll see you'll be able to see how the pattern's going and it won't be quite as stressful and hopefully you'll be able to relax a little bit and enjoy the creation that you're making because it's it's a lot of fun and um, if you you persevere and, and you're patient and you just keep trying and trying and don't let this get the best of you I'm sure you'll be happy so I will be back when I have completed round 18 I'll see you then okay I have completed round 18 of the bottom of our bag um, however when you're finishing the very end here and you're supposed to have 24 to get to your last space on your stitch marker to begin your next round if you are not right as I was I made I made a mistake in here in my count but um, if if your count isn't right it's not the end of the world don't go rip it out it can be fixed okay the main thing with this last round is that number one you have four increases or no let me take that back number one that you have 140 stitches okay and number two if your stitch count was 
right on your previous row and you had 136, then yes, you have to make four increases. Now, if you somewhere along here did not get your count quite right, like I did, I, um, I counted my increase as one and two when I was doing my count and I shouldn't have. So at the end here, I was off by two, but I was able to go back and see where I made the error. And it, it's like, it's okay. You just add them on the end. As long as you have 140 stitches in this last round, that is your goal for this round. 140 stitches. Okay, because if you don't have 140, if you're shy by one, you can go ahead and add an increase here. If you have 139, you can add an increase right here. Just put another stitch in that very last one. Uh, if you're off by more than that, um, contact me. On You can do it on Facebook. Uh, that's probably the easiest way. Or send me an email. Uh, bead addicts yarn at gmail.com and i will certainly do what i can to help you out with that um so it's not the end of the world i don't want you to to frog your project if you got this far because it can be fixed okay so here we are we are at round 18 with 140 stitches now you might notice it is looking a little rounder and that's because we put the increases in the in the middle here. Uh, we probably, if we would have changed things up a little bit in the round before that, it would be even a little rounder. But I didn't want to confuse you. I wanted to keep it easy. And um, that's our goal for this project, is to keep it easy. So we are ready to go on to the, um, the sides of our bag. And I'm going to take a break because I need to get the um, the pattern, the graph, and show it to you and explain what we're doing here and what our goal is and um, explain it to you a little bit about the mathematics of everything and stuff. Okay, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, let's see if we can get this video finished so I can get it posted for you girls so you can get started on your on the sides of your bag. So, um, I want to, you've completed your bottom and you have 140 stitches. So now we're ready to begin on the, uh, sides of the bag. So our, um, the pattern that we have here is 70 stitches wide, and this is made on easy bead pattern. I think you can find it at easy I don't know if it's easybeadpattern.com or just easybead. If you just look up easybead, it'll it'll come up if you Google it. So, um, and I I made this on there. This is actually made for beads, but we can adapt it to um, to our uh, tapestry or mochilla patterns. So, um, this is it's 70, 70 stitches wide. We have one hundred and forty stitches on our. On the bottom base of our bag so we need to repeat this pattern two times and that will give us 140 and that's that's kind of how you have to base out any any pattern that you're going to be using um, you have to figure in how wide that is as to how many repeats you're going to do to get your so that you know what size your base has to be because you have to have your base down your bottom down before you start your sides so um so there's some thinking you know you can't just pick a bottom and and a bottom pattern and do it and then say well i'm going to do this um this graph with it and it's going to work well sometimes you have to make changes you might have to add some rows to your bottom, rounds to your bottom, or take some off, or 
make some increases in different places, but um, we'll we'll work on that stuff as we as we go along with this. But so we got 70 times two is 140, so that equals our the bottom of our bag. So we're good with that. Um, and then we're going to be doing um, continuing in the same color as our the bottom of our bag for three rounds. But the first round here is going to be a little different. It's going to be kind of like a, um, I'll call it a turning round. Because you're going to be, um, that's where you're, you have to, divine, to define the, um, the bottom of your bag from the sides of your bag. So it'll be nice and crisp um, definition in, in the two. And, um, and also if, if you were doing another pattern where, your color changed here you're going to want to see your you want to get the full view of your um of the sides of your bag so if well and like i said we'll get we'll we'll do this first one together i'll show you how to how to do that in order to make that definition and then um and then the rest of it and all of this the nice thing about this is all of this is done in single crochets with no increases so you don't have to increase anymore all right so that's a good thing um so we'll we'll do the first round and then um the second and the third are going to be in the same color as your as your base if you want an accent color to be a little more prominent you could um do where I have the yellow here you could do it here on the third round so you would have two rounds of of yellow that's that's fine too and then we'll we'll get into but then you're going to have to learn how you're going to have to know how to change your colors because that's a little different at least than I've learned in regular crochet so um so how we do that um I'll have to teach you that but and then when we continue up up this part it I tried to make it really simple and didn't put too much into it um, so you'll be doing like well you can't see it too here too good here so I'll show you here like there's there's one there's a pink one here and then this is salmon so there's a one pink and then it's nine salmon and then one pink and nine salmon and then not one pink and nine salmon so it just it just goes on like that and that's so that's pretty easy you're you're going to be um, at every 10th spot you're going to have you're going to know that okay this is the the last stitch for that section and then when you get up here it's it's a pink and seven but then you're putting a pink in here so but we'll we'll work on that as we go along with that so this is your your sides oh and you want one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um Put a mark on this is the bottom and this is the top the top i put an extra round in there of um of the salmon but you know just a solid color and then continued on okay so you might want to mark that so this way when you go when you go back to it you know what direction you're looking at the page i probably should have put it in the um on the file but i didn't so Okay, so we're done with that. Now, I want to show you what, or sort of what this is going to look like. This is, this was done flat. Um, and we are not doing this part inside here. We're going to be doing just where you see the, the, the black. This will all be black. And then these are your, um, okay, I just want to make sure I get it all in the camera there. But um, your diagonals, okay, are here. So that's how it's going to look. All right. So I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of what it's going to look like. It's not exact. But um, just so you have an idea of, of what we're doing. Uh, if you want to get adventurous and try to put the other, um, the other, oops, the other diamonds in, um, you know, send me a... Um, Contact me on Facebook and I will uh, change the pattern according to this so that you, if you want to try it, that's up to you. 
Okay, I'm going to stop for a second and switch to my working position and I'll be back. Alrighty, here we are. We have completed our bottom 18 rounds and we have 180 stitches. And uh, we're going, we are beginning round one of the base of our bag. Okay, and I already did my first stitch and put my stitch marker in there. But um, we're going to be doing a, a little technique to form or define the, the sides, the bottom from the sides. So um, I'm, going to, I'm going to do this every 10 stitches. Um, so this way, it for one, it makes it a little easier, but two, it helps you to know that you're doing your stitch count right because uh, we'll be doing it actually 14 times around here and um, I think uh, uh, doing 10 stitches is pretty easy to count and then stop and then instead of trying to do 20 stitches I'm wondering if you got messed up because it just, you're going to be doing two things at the same time you're going to be doing you're going to be counting counting your stitches so that you know you you caught every single stitch around here and then you're also going to be um turning well, as i said we that's what we'll call it we're going to be turning up the side so um so when you get to the end here um you should you'll have um you'll end on 10 if you have 140 stitches so it helps to keep your your count right okay so I, I just wanted to help help you uh do that so we already did one we're going to continue on and remember hook all the way through to open up your stitch because i think it really helps with your consistency your carrying threads come forward okay and you should have two, at least two carrying threads, or you should have two carrying threads if you're doing it the way I've explained. Okay. In other projects, most likely you'll have more than two, but like I said, I want to keep it simple and not confuse you too much. So we're going to do 10 stitches here. That's two. three and you want to make sure that you're catching the whole stitch the whole thread uh, yarn whatever um, because that that keeps your work looking nice and neat you don't have any little little parts of your yarn hanging behind um, and you want to also make sure that you're going completely under your first thread not part way because it just makes it nice and neat I know some of the some of the um, the pictures that that you've been sharing with me of your the bottoms of your bags I, you know it's it's not critical at this point because you're just learning um, but like I said I want to I want you to learn all the all the details and um, so that your bag comes out nice so just just concentrate on all this stuff I didn't even catch that stitch there you concentrate on all this don't rush it because like I said this is not oh my this is not a quick gratification project this is a practice and patience and time project <laughs> so one two three four five six seven eight nine and oh, ten okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our bag over Oh, and also, let me address our tail here. You can um, take this and uh, 
weave it, you know, put it on a, a needle and weave it in so that it's, it's hidden. Um, I didn't have you, um, work this into your beginning. Um, normally I do, um, but I didn't want you to do that because I know for a lot of you just getting the first couple rounds down was difficult enough and so I didn't want to throw an extra thing in there and I don't know what happened here but I in your the other side of your bottom may not look quite like this it may not look as clean and that's fine because it's the back um I'm really happy that that it came out looking so nice but I think it's because I've I've changed some of my techniques and um and they're paying off because they're making everything look a lot cleaner and easier and uniform so what we're going to do is we flipped our bag over our bottom over and what we need to do is we need to start we want we want this to flip up just this one round okay we want it to start to flip up so that you can see the difference between your bottom and your side so what you need to do is very tightly, very tightly hold your work in between your fingers here. Okay, just for the first row. And you're going to want to hold it right, right about where your stitch marker is. And then you're going to take your carrying threads. Okay. And one at a time. You have to do this one at a time. You can't do them both together because they might be... In different places but you want to pull on it and give it a, a good pull but oops see I just I pulled too hard and it started pulling from over here and we don't want that so we need to straighten that out we want this to stay flat but we want this to give a tug I don't know which color I did but give a tug Take the next one, give a tug, and as you can see, it's starting to turn up because yep. you're, you're pulling those threads a little bit tighter. So we'll do another 10, and then you'll see it a little bit better. And another thing, because I'm getting used to um, holding my threads in the front, my carrying threads in the front, I don't have to move it out of the way as much. I can almost, with a lot of times, I can just kind of reach under and grab my next stitch. But that comes in time because you really have to get a feel for what you're doing here. And, um, and if you another another thing that you might want to do i didn't do it but um if you're not sh if you want want to have a better idea of your 10 stitches you could always take a stitch marker another one not the not your first one but and place it on your last one so you know that was your last one so this way you can just count from there um so you're not always counting in case you lose your count but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Eight. nine ten and then we're gonna point our, it's and it's best if you can to lay your back your lay your bag down on a uh, flat surface to do this so this way it just makes it a little bit easier all right so I'm gonna take one thread give a tug take our other thread Okay, give a tug, 
and see see how that's let me see if I can flip it around we can get good light we can't get good light we're not getting good light here um, and I, I'm not sure if I kind of I think that this because I pulled it here it's just making this one to curl up and we'll fix that later on but so that's what we want we want our our side to be starting up so we're turning turning our side okay so you keep on doing that and uh, every 10 stitches I think that's probably for most of you it's it's a comfortable amount um, and I have to make sure I stay in camera view too because I'm not doing this in my comfy chair where I can work a lot faster and a lot more comfortable <laughs> But that's okay. I want you to learn this. So I do that on other projects. I'm almost finished one bag um, that um, I started. Well, actually, the, this bag, this other bag that I showed you here, um, our, our diamonds are not going to be that big. This is a um, larger, larger gauge yarn. Um, it is cotton. Uh, but it's a thicker, it was a little bit thicker. I made this one, um, it was all I had when we were still living in Guatemala. Um, I was, I was like really desperate to learn these bags. And, um, so I did some in acrylic yarn and, um, and, and then I, I found some cotton that I had that would work. So, and it's not peaches and cream. It's, so it's not that thick. It's, it's thinner than that. I don't even remember what it was. But, um, so I thought, well, you know what, I want to, I want to see the difference between acrylic and cotton. And yes, cotton is definitely, there is a big, big difference there. You don't have the stretch and the acrylic, you could almost see it immediately. Plus you're using, usually with acrylic, you might, might be using a larger hook and, and stuff. Like even with, with that, that bag, I, I did use a, a larger hook, I believe. Um, but. I wanted, I wanted, so my camera keeps cutting out on me. So, um, I want you to continue around. I did another 10 here and I'm going to stop and I'm going to give a pull on the carrying threads. Okay. But you want to, you want to kind of bring it up and fold it over a little bit before you give your tug. So, you know, you got your, your right stitches there and give a tug. Okay. And you do that all the way around and I'll be back. Um, when I've completed this round, okay? Okay, I have finished my first round of the side of my bag. And I'm gonna show you a couple tips because yours may not be laying flat, it might be, the sides might be wavy. Um, so I just want to show you a couple things that you can do to fix that. All right. So what you want to do is after you've gone all the way around and you've given a little tug on every 10, um, 10 stitches. Now I'm just going to kind of mess up here on purpose a little bit so I can show you. I don't want to mess up too much, but. If yours is looking kind of like this, okay, it can be fixed. The nice thing is it can all be fixed without ripping out any stitches. Yoo okay, so what you're going to do is start at your stitch marker at your very beginning. And you have your, your first row standing up somewhat. And you just take your fingers and kind of work around to straighten it, it's actually going to when you get to here it might be really crinkled up but then it's going to pull those carrying threads all I'm going to move these so that they're not in the way but um, it's going to pull your carrying threads to the proper tension okay now here I got to work a little more because this is where I kind of messed it up so 
we're getting there and I'm feeling I'm really feeling it so what you're wanted what you want to do is you're going to need to hold on tight to your back stuff that you've already done okay and work this out hold on tight and just keep you know, run your run your fingers along there and see how it's turning even more but like I said because you what you're doing is when you're holding it tight you're keeping keeping those um, carrying threads from wanting to pull from this side and you might have to do this a couple times to get it sitting nice It'll be worth the time. Okay, so we got around to there. Let's do it one more time. Or you could. Let's do this. Lay it, lay it out. And you could go around again if you need to. It looks like I, I do. Do it. Try it this way. The other way. Use your thumb to form that turning row. Okay, and it should look something like that. Okay, so we're in a pretty good position to start our next row. And our next row is just going to be, we're gonna be using the same color. So I always like to make sure I have my Take out our stitch marker. And you're going to continue doing this part, it, this same technique throughout the whole thing. So that was the first stitch. I'm going to put our stitch marker in place. And that's one of the one of the main habits you need to get into is um, putting your stitch marker in at your first stitch because if not it's going to mess you up for you <laughs> all the rest of your work so and then you just continue around if you are going wavy and stuff it really shouldn't if you're doing it the way I showed you and if you're you're trying to keep by going all the way up the, the shaft of your hook, you're keeping the same tension and you're placing your working threads in front and you're placing them. You're not pulling them. You're not putting any... Oh, I didn't even go in a stitch there. I do that sometimes. Um, you're, not, you're not putting tension on them. You're just kind of placing them there and holding them there. Okay, it's going to keep your tension the same and your stitches by going all the way up the shaft is going to be the same. And I mean, I've, I've learned that this works. Um, like I said before, this was one of my biggest struggles. And since I have been doing this, I have not had to do, um, I know before I was constantly pulling and tugging on my carrying threads to get everything to line up right and not to have your colors showing through. And, and every time I did that, it's like it changed things. And since I've been doing this, th it works for me. So I hope it works for you. Um, I think it's it's worth taking the time to go all the way up the shaft and hold those carrying threads in front um, as opposed to constantly adjusting. Now you still might need to do some adjusting and the way we do that is the way that I showed you in the first the first round of this part is when we pull on pull on your carrying threads because sometimes you might 
it's not, like I said, it's not so important in the back, on the back of your work, because that's the inside of the bag. I mean, I like it to look nice too, as, as nice as I can. Um, so I'm really happy that this is hiding a lot, a lot of that stuff. And when you start changing your colors, you're going to see more colors coming through. So, but it still keeps it, it keeps it uniform doing it this way. Um, so that's, that's a nice thing. That one bothers me, but that was in the beginning and I can't worry about that now. But, um, it, it's just, it's just what I found is the best method. Um, there's a ton of videos out there on how to do this. And, you know, if this doesn't work for you, then go seek them out and you might find one that does work for you. Um, but like I said, in the very beginning when before we even started this was I'm teaching you what works for me I'm teaching you what I've learned I'm teaching you um, why it works for me um, and so um, I just uh, that's my that's what I like to do is I like to share share my knowledge um, and help people out so I'm always available. Well, I'm not always available, but I'm um, more than willing to to help you with ever what with whatever problems you're having, and because um, I want you to be a success at this. So I'm going to put this down so you can see how this is looking. See now we're getting. You can't see it this way too much. Maybe if I turn it this way. Yeah. My, because the lighting's not real good, but it's turned. It, we got we got a definition here of for our going up our sides. So, like I said, we're calling this our turning row. But and it just continues. And um, so what what I want you to do, oh, excuse me, is um, finish your three rounds of your bottom color. And my, I'll be doing another video. I'll start it on a new video. Um, how we change our colors. Go from one color to the next. Okay. So I will be talking to you later. I want to get this video up uh, processed and up on YouTube. Because that takes a while. So I'm hoping that it'll, it'll be up shortly. Okay.